Topic under discussion today is about bioavailability. Now this topic is going to be discussed in a very simple and easy way. So let me tell you first of all about the points that are going to be discussed in today's discussion. Number one, we'll talk about the definition of the bioavailability in a very simple way. Then we'll talk about the representation or denotion of the bioavailability. We'll talk about the simple, okay, the sample that is actually used for the bioavailability representation. Then we'll talk about the formula of the bioavailability then we'll talk about the types relative absolute bioavailability assessment of the bioavailability direct method of assessment indirect method of assessment then we'll talk about determination here we'll talk about number of points that are discussed uh, regarding determination example like we'll talk about trapezoidal term multiple sampling term planimetric term abbreviated sparse sampling partial area short term single point triple point post dose three point or triple point method we'll talk about all these terms in a very simple and easy way let's get started from the very first point what is the definition of the bioavailability very simple just concentrate first of all let me read this definition for you guys then we will make you people understand about this definition in a very simple and easy way what is the definition here the rate and extent to which drug product releases active ingredient to the site of action now here rate is actually time and extent is the amount so now what we get from this entire definition is here we have drug product this drug product the time it takes in the amount of the drug this drug product releases to the site of action is called bioavailability very simple this drug product the time this drug product takes to release the amount of this drug product to the active site to the site of action to the site of action now the amount released from this drug product is actually the active ingredient okay in short once again the time that this drug product uses or consumes before releasing the active ingredient to the site of action is called bioavailability. This is your entire definition. This drug product is consuming time. And then this drug product is releasing the active ingredient to the site of action. This mechanism, this process is known as bioavailability. Very well, simple. And if still you have confusion, drop your confusion in the comment box. We come for the answers very soon and uh, wherever you feel confusion, whether it is here and then in the entire lecture or in the any lecture, drop in the comment box your questions, we'll come with answers. We'll try our best to answer your questions. I appreciate questions, okay? Well, then we have denotion or representation. Simple, we represent by availability by symbol F. Now, what is the formula? F is simple representation. Formula is F is equal to AUC divided by dose. AUC is area under curve. Here we have area under the curve. This is the curve and the area. This is this portion. Under the area is actually called as area under curve. Uh, some students know and some don't. So for them, I just rewrote this. Well, here is area under the curve divided by dose is equal to F. F is equal to AUC divided by dose. Formula. This can be used to calculate bioavailability then we have types we have two types of the bioavailability relative and absolute what is relative very simple drug in the formulation compared to the recognized standard dosage formulation now this definition is a bit tricky for most of the students now what is the reason behind because they don't concentrate this definition it's very really easy what we do is here very simple we actually compare what one formulation with the recognized standard formulation so we have two formulations how many two one is actually a formulation available with us another one is the recognized one which is standard formulation so when you compare two formulations that is actually called uh, and giving us the bioavailability named as relative bioavailability. example very simple we have capsule amoxicillin and Suspension amoxicillin. So both are amoxicillin, but one is capsule and the other is suspension. So two formulations when compared, when related, will give you relative bioavailability. Very simple, don't make it complex. Coming to the point. Absolute. What we do here is we compare 
any root with the IV. Just keep in mind. We have IV root. So when we compare any other root with the IV, that will give us the result that will be named as absolute bioavailability. Suppose we have oral bioavailability. When you compare oral with the IV, so this is called as absolute bioavailability. Such kind of comparison. Okay. Done. Now let's come towards assessment. How to assess bioavailability. We have two methods. Direct, indirect. Now, what is direct method of assessment? What is indirect method of assessment? Very simple. If I just stand here and observe my patient, first of all, then I indicate the drug to the patient again, then I observe. So my observation directly of the patient, okay, when I observe the patient directly, such kind of observation is actually named as direct assessment. And when I give the drug, then I take the sample from the patient, then I just go through that samples that is actually called as indirect assessment. Example, for the direct assessment, we have uh, example like acute pharmacologic relaxation. Before indicating the drug, I observed pupil size, ECG, and clinical observation I did. Then I indicated the drug. After that, I again observed what happened to the pupil, pupil size, whether it was before it was elated, now it is constricted or not. Before ECG was having different sort of uh, uh, waves, now it is having different sort of and before clinical observations were uh, different, like now it is different. Suppose like uh, before a patient presented with a pain, uh, asked me that I have pain, I'm feeling pain. So I indicated the drug to the patient and the patient relieved. So this is actually called what? A sort of uh, assessment named as direct assessment. Okay, direct assessment of the bioavailability. Then we have indirect assessment. In the indirect assessment, we just go through pharmacokinetics, absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, okay? And we take blood analysis, we go through the blood analysis, urine, stool is analyzed. So such kind of assessment is called as indirect assessment. And this assessment which you observe the patient directly is called what? Direct assessment. Now let's come towards determination. How to determine bioavailability. Very simple. We have multiple terms here, but just we have two methods of determination. Number one is trapezoidal, number two is abbreviated. The rest of others, the names and terms used here are actually for these two methods. Example like trapezoidal method is a single method. It has got different name in another book that is multiple sampling method. In another book it has got a name that is planimetric method. And abbreviated method has got different names like sparse sampling method, partial area method, short term method and in some books abbreviated method is further classified into single point triple point method and in some books further they are given more names like post dose three point method. In short we have two. Number one method is that trapezoidal method. In this we take more than four samples, four or more than four then we determine those four samples. Through that, then we determine the bioavailability. And in the abbreviated method, we take uh, samples less than four, three or one or two. So less than four is abbreviated method, more than four or four is actually trapezoidal method. Now what we do in the trapezoidal method, very simple, we take all the samples on the x-axis and y-axis, then we join those samples, we get a curve like this. After that, we make trapezium. So here we get number of trapezoids, okay? These are actually called trapezoids. So after that, we determine the bioavailability through this and uh, we have uh, certain mathematical steps through which we just observe the trapezoidal method. So this is called trapezoidal method, multiple sampling method or planimetric method. In this, we take more than four samples or more than three samples, okay? More than three or four. So four is the limit for the trapezoidal method. Four is the limit, then we can exceed from the four. And according to abbreviated method, the name indicates abbreviate, we short. So this is actually also called, also called as short term method. In this we take either one sample or three samples. One sample is actually the given, the taken, the one that is actually, uh, when the drug is indicated, the CMEX, according to the CMEX of the drug, the sample is taken from the particular uh, point. It means uh, if a drug is indicated to the patient or to the, any uh, sample that is just animal, so then we just take the drug at particular max point, that CMAX. Then we have a triple method, a triple point method. In this, what we do is very simple. We just take uh, the sample, we just take three samples. 
uh, in the sense uh, the first one is taken when it is for absorption then we have take for over the, at the time uh, for maximum concentration cmax then we take the third one at the elimination so we take at the absorption uh, cmax and elimination so three different points that actually observed for triple point method anyways if you still uh, still you are having a feeling confusion sort in any point anywhere anywhere in the topic in the entire lecture drop in the comment box so if you want further elaboration of this topic you can draw ask us in the comment box so if the comments increase then we will make another video otherwise i hope uh, this is actually a precise comprehensive lecture regarding bioavailability hope you got